Thank you. Um, okay, so um, my name is Michael Duchin. I will present to you uh, our experience in using QGIS server uh, for uh, hosting uh, web maps. Um, so, okay, use the, the mouse. Uh, we are a French company dedicated to create and share open source uh, GIS solutions, mainly around QGIS. Uh, we are core developers uh, for the, the server part, and uh, we, uh, we have created other tools like Lee's Map Web Client to publish uh, QGIS projects online. Um, I will first present what is QGIS server. is uh, mainly the power of QGIS desktop, but in the cloud, meaning um, a server is just a computer uh, somewhere and you can ask it questions and it will return answers. For example, you can ask, give me a JPEG of the layers reverse at this scale and in this area, or you can say, please pass me some vector data for the layer of towns uh, with the name uh, beginning with A. So you ask questions, you get answers. And there is um, an, the upper Open Geospatial Consortium uh, has standard protocols and QGIS servers can, uh, you can use pr standard ways to ask these questions as requests. Um, the main interest in QGIS servers, is, uh, it uses QGIS as backend. So you have the same logic and one QGIS project is a map. Um, and it uses the same rendering engine, so you have the same rendering in QGIS desktop as in Q QGIS server. Here are the, the well-known uh, WMS, WFS, WCS, WMTS, and GCAPI uh, services QGIS server can respond to, can, you can communicate with. And QGIS server has some cool additional features like redlining, you can pass uh, parameters with geometries and the text and it will draw that above the, the map uh, rendering. You can filter specific filters with uh, SQL-like filter or with expressions too, uh, with QGIS expressions for some of the, the requests. And you can also use selection to highlight some features, for example, uh, a town, uh, put that in yellow. And um, you can also have that in, in GetPrint. And the last one is when you need to identify a feature, you can uh, use uh, QGIS expressions to render the text based on the feature's data. So you can create rich HTML with uh, um, yeah, great content. Um, QGIS server also has specific requests such as get project settings, get schema extensions, and one uh, amazing one is the get print you can use a QGIS print layout and ask the server to export that in PDF or a JPEG or PNG. And it also supports the Atlas uh, for uh, specific features. So you can tell QGIS server, give me the print uh, for the, these layers uh, for this specific town. Um, an example, here it's the web client, you can just select a rectangle and then QGIS server will use the print layout and just render that in a PDF, uh, for example, with uh, all the, the rendering done in QGIS. Uh, a key point is the certification. Since 2018, it is certified as official OGC reference implementations and uh, the QGIS contributors are, have uh, put uh, some efforts to have a complete test suite to, uh, to make that uh, possible and to make sure it will stay certified uh, around uh, in, in the future. So now I will speak a little bit about Lismap Web Client. It's one client uh, created by three leaves. Uh, the aim is to publish projects online in your browser. So it uses QGIS server and as uh, I will talk about it to illustrate the use of QGIS server. So mainly you just put your projects in the server and uh, you will have QGIS server and Post PostgreSQL for example and Lismap application and you can use 
uh, a browser uh, to see the map rendered by QGIS server. And you can also use the, the, the other, uh, other GIS solutions to, to use it. For example, you have here six projects uh, which are published. It's a landing page. And for each project, it uh, renders a map. You can browse the map. You can click and get the, here is the feature information uh, taken from the QGIS server, get feature info with the expressions. So you can have a lot of things. And here you see a link to get the atlas uh, created by QGIS server get print um, request. Another uh, example of list map is you can edit uh, online too. So in 3 lists we have created list map web client. We use uh, QGIS server and we, has, we have an offer called list cloud. And this will illustrate how we face some issues and how we uh, try to uh, find solutions uh, to these issues. So basically, we provide uh, hosting for QGIS server, ListMap Web Client, PostgreSQL, PostGIS, and uh, we offer different kind of off plans. The key figures, um, we used QGIS server since 10 years. So it's been a while. Uh, we know well the, the, the product. We have more than 40 servers, and um, we have we use, we parallelize uh, the, the request to 200 QGIS server workers. Um, we use this version from 3.10 to 3.22. And one week, we have more than three or four million uh, requests uh, to our QGIS server, meaning QGIS server can respond well to a lot of browsing, a lot of uh, get map, get print, get capabilities requests. Mm, the main requests are get maps. Um, with few errors, and the get capabilities, the give me all the project uh, layers, uh, this request is the longest. Uh, it's when QGS server loads the, the project, like you do in uh, QGS desktop when you load the project. And uh, the get map response times are very good uh, compared to the other servers. It's not better, it's not uh, uh, less good. And uh, here uh, I've put some figures for the one week, uh, in two weeks ago. Um, obviously, the performance depends a lot on the complexity of the project, the layers, the symbology, the, what you, you will need to, to render. What are the challenges of uh, QGIS server? We choose to trust our clients, our users, and so uh, they use the full power of QGIS. They can uh, have up to 400 layers in the project. Most of them do not do that, but some can do that. Uh, we accept every QGIS compatible vector and raster format, except proprietary raster formats. We have, they can use PostgreSQL views or uh, complex queries. So you can have a loading times depending on the complexity of the PostgreSQL queries. And they also can use external WFS or WMS servers uh, layers from external servers, and um, they can do whatever they, they want with the layers. They can uh, represent building uh, for Italy at very small scale, and so have a complex rendering uh, to do for QGIS server. And the main issues we encountered uh, were the project loading time. Uh, imagine when you have a complex project in QGIS desktop, sometimes you can wait I don't know, 20 seconds, one minute for the project to load. Uh, it's exactly the same for QGIS server, it's not better. The computer uh, can be a bit better than your laptop, but it uses the same solutions. And the memory consumption can be also a problem for heavy projects. So I will just speak about that uh, later. And QGIS server um, cannot QG several different workers uh, used to parallelize cannot use the same cache, so that can lead to a multiply of the memory consumption for the, the server. What are the solutions to that? The first one is you need to support your clients. You need to help them to create a better QGS project to better use symbology, to not render buildings at very uh, small scales to, to, to be a geometrician. So we help them 
to improve the project. Obviously, you need to monitor and to alert uh, the issues you see, the, the problems you have in your server, the longest requests, the, the, the errors you can have. We, in Trilis, we contribute to improve QGIS server performances. We also develop new tools um, to address the, the issues we encountered. And uh, we, we also use some techniques like proxy, a request from QGIS server to external resources, and since 10 years, we have improved our architecture to answer those issues, those um, challenges. An example of monitoring, um, we store metrics for uh, all the requests made by Lizmap Web Client to QGIS server, to uh, PostgreSQL, to, um, we, we also store metrics for the CPU, memory, disk status, network, usage, and all these metrics are uh, integrated in Grafana, it's a dashboard maker, and um, we use that to know what's happening. And we have also alerting, you need to, to have some alerts when there is a problem. So text alert uh, with phone or email alert or other, other ways. And uh, it's a small example of one week of request. Uh, there is four million uh, requests here, and you see uh, three of the days uh, the, the different requests. You can see the loading times and uh, the number of errors uh, if there are some problems in the QGIS project. Uh, that was for the three list part, but as a GIS user, when, the, when you publish your project, you don't know the problems sometimes. So we have developed also tools to help the GIS admin to know what is going on and which projects he must improve. So we, for example, the invalid layer counts and the memory use or the loading time used for QGIS server for this project. We calculate the mean of the, 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 these figures and we put that in a in table in Lizmap Web Client admin panel to show them in red or yellow what problems can occur, for example, here we have the log which say uh, this PostgreSQL layer is invalid. So please correct that. Um, as a core contributor to QGIS server, we also improve QGIS and we develop specific tools. Um, for example, um, I will speak about the, the, the three, the, the third point, improve the QGIS project loading time. It's one of the key issues. So we need to say QGIS server cannot do exactly as QGIS desktop. So one of my colleagues is proposing a pull request to avoid unnecessary requests to database such as PostgreSQL, Oracle, or others to, you, to open all the layers in read-only mode. And that will benefit a lot uh, for the, the loading time. Um, we also do other things written here like fix bugs, regressions, and improve unit test suite to avoid further regressions. Um, we have also developed uh, PyQGS server. It's uh, a Python-based uh, server. So you, we, not, we do not use the, the, the default FCGY uh, I, um, interface, but we use uh, a Python server to run QGIS server and we love it because uh, you can configure it very easily with uh, with an ini file and uh, it has some systems we, you can reboot automatically if the memory is uh, is too too big or we, we have a, a lot of things going on here uh, and I've put the link uh, if you need some details we also develop plugins uh, one to extend the format of the WFS uh, get feature requests. Uh, one to print atlas uh, that was not possible before in older uh, QGS. Now it's possible to use directly the get print and some others. Um, and we also, uh, as an example, I will uh, finish with an. We developed a tool called PyQGS WPS to extend the capability of QGS server and to use the processing algorithm in QGS. And you can uh, publish that in WPS protocols. So you can ask the server to create a, a buffer, uh, to print something, to, uh, to run queries, to whatever you can do in QGS processing toolbox. You can do it 
in uh, this server um, by QGS WPS. As a conclusion, um, I, I will say QGS server is a great tool. We, since 10 years, we have never seen um, a problem so big that we will say, okay, let's abandon QGS server is not uh, for production context. It is, uh, it is a very robust tool um, and we use it since a long time and it's okay. But you need to um, choose the, the right architecture, you need to monitor it, you need to uh, help your users to do great QGS projects and not do everything they, they, they want. And um, since um, two, two or three years, there is a lot of efforts to improve it uh, and to, I would say, separate it a little bit of the QGS desktop uh, logic to, yeah, to, because it's in a server context, you cannot do exactly as you will do in a desktop application. So, um, I will, yeah, there are some resources here, uh, documentation, uh, docs.3list.org, uh, and our Twitter and uh, email. And uh, thank you for your attention. And thanks a lot to the QGS community, the developers, the translators, all the people who worked a lot since, uh, I would say, 20 years to make this tool so great. It can benefit to QGS desktop, also to QField, also to uh, QGS server. So you have a, a full uh, ecosystem, which will ease, yeah, ease your work. You just focus on your work, geomatician work, create your QGS project with great layers, great data, and you can publish that online, you can publish that uh, uh, with QField or input in your uh, in your smartphone and yeah that's thanks thanks a lot to the developers